Hey there, everyone. This is Jacqueline Jacks from AVA Live Radio. We are here with Zeta Barbara on live streaming Tuesday. Hi, Zeta. Hi, Jacqueline. I am so happy to be here. I am so <laughs> excited you made it. Um, so you're in your studio, and this is going to be so exciting. What a treat, because you agreed to show us around on everything you've been doing. Yes, I had to uh, gather my paintings all into this one spot just for this show. And they've been all over town, like in different shops, um, law firms, and so, and galas, exhibits. So now I've brought them all into one spot just for you. And the one behind me is the one that you, you see a lot. Um, it's kind of a signature one that I've done. It's very big. It's almost the size of my uh, wall here. So like six by eight, maybe. Um, oh gosh, it's yeah, it's a huge butterfly. It's been two uh, art museums. Uh, the There's an art museum downtown here in San Antonio and then the San Antonio Art League Museum. I painted it while I was in college and I went to a Catholic school where they had priests and the uh, one of the brothers recognized like my talent in this and so he helped me get it into um, the Art League Museum oh. and that helped me out because I was originally a business student and so once I had my art in a museum it was more credible and I, I started exhibiting. Um, it's beautiful. I've, I've been such a fan of your work since we first met. I mean you guys if you if you don't uh, if you haven't seen the previous episode we did a behind the music series with Zeta uh, some time ago, I can't remember if it was uh, 2015, maybe October, on your music. And in that episode was when I first discovered that she was an artist. And now since then, you've been spending time converting these into fashion designs too, right? Yes. Yes. So that's what I'm doing right now. I work with, uh, um, well, I volunteer uh, with this organization, First MD, here in San Antonio. Yeah. And they are a um, group of doctors who um, mm -hmm. help vets with PTSD and, uh, and mood disorders. And so uh, one of the paintings that I've done is this like military uh, soldiers in a poppy field. Wow. And um, some people, attributed to like World War II because there was poppy fields in World War II. But I was thinking Afghanistan because Afghanistan is uh, the opium capital of the world. And so they have poppy fields. Um, and that it, that is what I originally like intended it to be. But it can, it can go either way. Um, after, uh, I have a whole bunch of... Um, a whole bunch of paintings with me right here so I'm just going to go through them with yeah, you go through them I'd love it this wow. one I this was a commissioned painting the lady wanted something that matched her bedroom and so she had she loved purple and this was the purple in her bedroom and she wanted something serene so she liked water lilies I did uh, some nice horizontal strokes to make like still water mm -hmm. and um, commissioned work it's it, it's hard um, because she had me paint it, but then she changed her mind that she didn't really want it. So that's mine. And I have had offers on it, but I'm going to use it for the show, the fashion show coming in November. And, um, so I'm not going to accept any offers until the fashion show for, okay. for this piece. Is there a, is, is it inspiring a piece of clothing? It is inspiring a piece of clothing. I don't have the clothing with me uh, right now, but I can post the design on my Facebook page and you'd be able to see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I was going to go on to the next piece, which does have a piece of clothing associated with it. Um, this is one that you see online a lot. Oh, yeah. I did this one in school with an instructor called Sarah France. And she's a, um, she's a really popular artist here and in Austin. She, uh -huh. people love her uh, detail. She does drawings and she does really detailed drawings. So I was in her painting class and uh, she did not accept this painting until I did like this intricate 
little dots all over the wings. Oh, I don't know if you can wow. see that. Yeah. But um, I did a lot of shading and uh, detail. And that's when she finally gave me a good grade on the assignment. Um, but she, she encouraged me to push, push myself because otherwise I'm starting a bigger version of that one. And it's supposed to match the size of the one that's hanging over here. Um, so that's the bigger version. And that's how it was like prior to Sarah France coaching me. Incredible. <laughs> it's kind of it's still in the underpainting stage. But um, that, that painting is uh, tied to a dress for this fashion show that I have coming in November. And this is the dress. So can it, it starts out with like a wrap on the bodice. And then it has like a mermaid uh, rose fabric to the bottom of it. I uh, had a model for this, but we've had so much technical difficulties that um, I guess she she's not here right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we're gonna we're gonna go on to the two other dresses that I have made. This is a, a show in November, so I'm just starting right now. These these designs I posted on my Facebook, and now they're just coming into fruition as actual dresses. Where's and the, where's the um where's the fashion show gonna be? The fashion show is gonna be I they don't know yet, but it's probably gonna be downtown because the last two events that we've had were downtown events. Um, we had a, one event at the Blue Star and another one at the Paper Tiger, which is like a club downtown. Is this San so, Antonio, Texas? In San Antonio, Texas. Okay, good, good. Yeah, let me see more. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this red dress. It's, it's tied in with a... Um, it, with a painting and um, I did a whole bunch of little white butterflies using ribbon and uh, and I'm gonna be sewing them on to this dress and um, what I want is that when the model walks it, it when it when she walks down the runway it kind of billows and it makes the butterflies look like they're moving and they're flying oh how um, when you see the painting you would you'll understand why I want uh, want it to be like that we, now there is, I think we actually put it up um, in one of when we were waiting for you for the interview we had the painting in the background because there's a picture on Facebook for ABA live radio that you you created for us and we're actually going to pop it up right now so you guys can see it and you can see the painting is behind the dress so that you can kind of see the inspiration behind that and I love I love being able to show those because it's really so creative, you know, and so and it's so time consuming. Right. It's amazing to me that you've put so much time and energy into this. I know how long it takes to design things and fit them and and just, you know, be inspired by your own paintings to actually make the whole garment and bring it to that point where you're going to show it in a fashion show. It can take such a large amount of time and energy, you know, so yes. bravo, it's terrific that you're doing that. Yes, especially like this next dress that yeah. I have. I'm going to do a whole bunch of uh, Swarovski crystals beading on it. And this is what I've started so far. Oh, my God. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's going to take yeah. a long time. I can't believe it. Yeah, like a, one of those blue butterfly wings. So I found that fabric. I'm, I'm doing the um, the crystal uh, wing pattern and it's inspired by something I saw in the Encore Hotel in Las Vegas like I found this butterfly purse that they had on display and I said I have to do something like that so I'm doing I'm doing that to this dress and um, it goes along with this painting it's a big calla lily with a blue butterfly on the bottom uh, th there's gonna be two models and two dresses a yellow dress for the calla lily and then this wing this wing dress and, Let me see uh, that, see that painting again. It's so pretty. I love your brush strokes and everything that, that you do. Again. You know that the dimension in your paintings, 
from the beginning when I first saw them, and I remember, you know, last year when I saw these and, and you didn't even tell me about them in the beginning, which I couldn't believe it. You were just so focused on the music. You didn't say anything <laughs> about the paintings. I had to find it for myself. And I was just like, oh my goodness, we have got to get you on this show with these paintings. And now a year later, you're finally <laughs> doing finally. it. And when I was talking to you about them on the show, I was like, I wished for something like this where I could yeah, show it to you I because know. I was, I think, I think I was describing them and it's, it's so much more impactful to see them in person because I do them large scale for a reason. So people can feel, feel how big they are and how small, uh, make, I make people feel like insects or butterflies, you know, by doing it that large. How do you feel that you developed your own style? Because you have a really unique style. And I think that a lot of people always want to know about that. And they always are interested in how did she figure out what her style was going to be? Um, wow. Over time. It, it, over, um, over the course of a lifetime, I feel. I went to Mexico in my teens mm -hmm. and I um, encountered the work of Diego Rivera. And he's a... a a uh, muralist, a very famous muralist there. Uh, he's also Frida Kahlo's husband. And um, he paints really round, somewhat rotund uh, people and subjects and objects. And so what I do is I also round out, um, like this one, I round out the edges of the flowers and make everything a little bit more billowy. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm definitely in, uh, inspired by his work. Um, also, Georgia O'Keeffe, like a lot of people say that that's uh, another artist that this work reminds them of because it, it is flowers. Um, the only difference is that I do add the subject of a butterfly because to me, butterflies represent transformation and uh, hope and uh changing for the better, like changing to a better and final state. And I feel like at certain points in my life, that's the message that I needed. So I would keep painting these more for, uh, to, to display that message, but also for myself. Yeah. Um, and over time I develop the skills to like this one, it looks very 3D, like you can grab the butterfly wing um, yeah. out as from the flower. Over time, I kept developing my skills. And Amazing. I uh, love it. this is one that was associated with the dress. Oh, it, yeah, there it is. Yeah. And Look now I have moved on to sort of clouds in my work and this feeling of weightlessness and floating. So I have the flowers, uh, uh, everything kind of in the air and suspended in the air. So um, I'm adding movement and, f you know, more feeling buoyancy to the things I'm painting. And this is like another huge one. Oh my goodness. Me that's that? um, it's a town in Mexico. It? Oh, in Mexico. Yeah. Like, you actually walk walk down that street. Yeah, it, it's supposed to make you feel like you can walk in. <laughs> and, uh, and I do use of like perspective that's really tricky because it's a curved street. Yeah. So like I had to redo it three, four times to get it right. It starts out uh, longer at the top and then kind of gets smaller towards the bottom to give it the illusion of death. And, now, do you um, paint in oils or are they... What what do, what do you use typically? I, yeah, I paint in oils typically because I like I like to be able to uh, have some time in between to make choices. Mm -hmm. I'm not the most well. I am decisive, but when it comes to painting and perfectionism, I uh, like to give myself some some time to manipulate the, the the painting a certain way kind of like a writer can go back to their work yeah and uh, and take out certain things and certain words so oil painting is a slower process and that's why i do it but 
but interesting. Um, I never thought of it that way. That's a really good way to choose, actually, because watercolor so it seems so final because you can you only have too many drags on the paper and then you start to deteriorate the paper, right? So yeah. it's amazing. You can layer the oils. What about like acrylics? Are they certain are, are they in the same category as that? Uh, acrylics I believe. Um, and uh, dry quickly unless you're using a slow drying medium. Uh -huh. And uh, you can somewhat like oil. They typically dry a little bit quicker and um, an overall quicker. Oil paintings take probably a couple months to really dry. Oh my, dry. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Difference between the settling and uh, being dry, and it takes it takes a while depending on what you're using to uh, add something to make it dry faster. And so you can add a retardant to make it slower. The, there's a lot of chemistry and science involved with oil paint, which makes it more complicated, and it also makes the paint more valuable. You never notice. Probably the uh, color. The audio on your phone is cutting out just a little bit, I think. So maybe like switch switch places, like I turn around and go to another part in your house. Yeah, maybe that might help because I know you're on your phone. So. Oh yeah. There you go. That's better, I think. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So the uh, so what made you decide to go and start doing some fashion pieces? What what was the original? decision to do. Did you want to get into fashion? Do you want to do a fashion website and get more into it? Or are these just more like art pieces for the fashion shows? Um, I, I did want to do fashion ever since I was younger. It was a, probably my original um, declaring major until I am migrated to market. Wait, Zita, hang on one second. I'm going to stop the recording and here's what I want you to do. Can you jump out and jump back in? Jump out and jump back in. Yeah. All right. Jump out and jump right back in. Okay. Much better. So go ahead and tell us about the, uh, why you decided to do the fashion. I decided to do fashion. Um, when I was young, I would, uh, just draw a whole bunch of different fashions. Um, I was, I feel like I told you I was in a, a boot camp once, um, for teenagers and even while I was in that boot camp, I would be making dresses and gowns, camo gowns, uh, in in my doodles. So I've always been doodling about it, and I decided um, I decided to do it as one of my bucket list. I got into that car accident. I made this bucket list of things I would like to do, and um, I'm trying to plug in my phone because I was thinking maybe that's the reason. I was oh, cutting out. I can hear you much better now. The uh, So tell us a little bit about the car accident. You got in a car accident, and then this is pretty much what inspired you to kind of get on to, some yeah. of the projects? Um, in, I've, I think it was 2011, I got into a car accident with a cement truck. Um, the, the cement truck's grill was at, a, at my side window. And I thought for sure at that moment, I was going to probably not survive that ac accident because I was in a small little car and I was competing against a cement truck that was going at my side window probably at 50 miles an hour um, because it, it was a, it was an intersection across the intersection um, that that was a speed limit. And I was just, um, turning into the traffic. So it got me like right on the side. And it was quite terrifying. I thought, yeah, I really thought I was gonna die in that moment. My car spun around. Um, I had no control over the car. Oh. And um, I don't even, I hardly even remember too much of what happened. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm scared. Every time I see something, uh, at my side when I'm driving, I flinch. So, oh, I and know. even when other people are driving, I, I tend to flinch because um, because of that uh, that accident. But after 
after that accident, I had a moment where I had, um, I sat down and I made a bucket list box. Yeah, and what bucket that list. Yeah, a bucket list box. So what it, it really consists of are little post-it notes where um, every time I do something, I can check off the note. It's just little tiny notes. And um, one of the things that I put on there was making my own fashion line. And so that's a line that kind of corresponds with my paintings. Um, that's terrific. Because I have the opportunity to do it and, uh, and I can check off the, my bucket list of things to do. And uh, when I started the album, is a, it was way off to the track. I, I wrote that I really wanted to do an album and uh, and I would finish it and complete something uh, before I before I died. And now I have two. Like I'm doing, I finished that one album. I need an angel, and um, I'm starting one right now with a talented producer. Uh, he's a guy that just graduated from a really prestigious program, mm -hmm. and he's like one of these straight A genius kids. <laughs> Um, he's also a very accomplished uh, piano player, and he, we're kind of collaborating to make, uh, to take some old ideas that I had, and he is giving me advice on what really, uh, what works structurally in songs, and we're gonna, we're gonna mature my music, and so that's what I'm up to right now. Oh, I'm excited for you. And and so for those of us who um, don't know about your website, I just want to like tell everybody about where they can where they can find you. Now, I know you started a Periscope channel, which I'm really excited about, because as you walk this journey, there's so much going on with you that this video is actually kicking kicking off you being a live streaming person online. And I really love that because you've got art, you have fashion, you have fashion shows coming up, you're doing a new album. There's just such classic live streaming stuff. You know what I mean? That if you're going to be promoting online, you have just got to make live streaming a part of that. So I'm excited guys. You want to be sure to go to her at Zeta Barbara one, 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 one. That's your Periscope channel, right? Yes. And then what's one, your one, one, it stands for 1111, like a lucky number. 1111, <laughs> awesome. And then you're also on Facebook, Twitter. We have that all linked up on our profile under Zeta Barbara. And then is there a website where people can purchase? It's fashion? coming soon. It is coming soon because I am finishing a book and I am most likely going to e-publish this book. And I'm going to be offering it to people online. And it's not going to be very expensive because I'd rather have people read the book uh, yeah. than, than to make a huge killing and become the next JK Rowling. I feel like it's a really funny and informative book. And I want that one to at least get people used to my writing style and to my sense of humor. What's the book about? Um, it's a book called Hands, and it starts out with this, uh, it, it, what, what inspired the book was a conversation with a business, a very important business guy, and he said, he told me that I wasn't an artist, and so it's kind of a <laughs> funny response to him. It is a funny response to the, to, so I make this character who is a loser, because uh, the, I, I feel like it, I, I'm, I'm kind of making a parody or making fun of um, <laughs> making fun of how probably the business world may. It's, it's, I mean, I'm not saying business people are bad or anything. They love art, but and they're normally the customers, the corporations and stuff that that hang uh, and contribute to art projects. But for this particular person, I. Um, I made this character up who is inspired by Don Quixote. And he's kind of this, this loser who has this big dream to be a radio personality. And he works for a radio station. I told you you were an artist. 
and um, he, on his fir or, the first day that he works up the nerve to, to ask his boss for a promotion for this spot on the air, um, instead of getting promoted, he actually gets fired. <laughs> and it <laughs> that's great. Friend, uh, across the street, that's a neighbor, says, "What you need to do is go on a blind date with this girl that I know. That's gonna cheer you up." <laughs> and it turns out he falls in love with this blind date, and he ends up lying to the lady because he doesn't want to say that he was fired or unemployed. So yeah. he uh, he he finds out that she likes art, and he says he pretends to be an artist just to impress this girl. <laughs> and the rest of the book is learning art through this character who very comedically learns art. <laughs> like he has to learn art to impress the, the, the girl. That's terrific. I love it. I cannot wait. So you're going to e-publish it, then it'll obviously be on a, an e-publishing company and, and probably through Amazon and, and uh, what is it, in Nook? Amazon Kindle is what I was looking at. Yeah, I was okay, that's at. great. Yes. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. My God, you have so much going on. You're so inspirational. And I just... See what I mean? Periscope is your thing. You have just too much to talk about and, and just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Now, when are you going to do another piece of artwork? Are you working on one now or is it something that you do every day? Uh, it, you know, it used to be something I was doing every day. And then I had, as of last year, like since the last time I talked to you, I ended up traveling a lot. I went to Las Vegas. I went to New York. I went to Kauai. And I moved into a new house. It, so it, oh it was a lot of different movements where I haven't had a still moment. But I want to progress. The, the, the next thing that I'm going to be start doing are waves and clouds. Um, I'm working with a cousin who uh, took some really pretty photos out in Florida. Like he went to uh, – he took a trip to Florida and uh, took some beautiful photos of the waves. And I said, I have to paint those. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is like the ocean. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm very, very excited for you. And this has just been wonderful. Thank you for getting on this interview with me and being part of our live streaming event. And I just cannot wait to see more. So we're going to keep uh, watching you on Facebook and Twitter and anxiously await your website so that maybe we can see these more of these beautiful artworks in full view. But I know that if we follow you on Periscope, guys, be sure to follow her at Zeta Barbara 1111 so that you won't miss it because every time she's got something new, obviously it's going to be out there on Periscope, right? Yes. Yay. I, I've, I've gotten a little bit addicted to Periscope since, since getting on. Yay. <laughs> Okay. I'm so glad. I See, I told you. <laughs> it's so addicting because people jump in and out of the periscopes and you get to meet so many people. And I noticed that they, it really does translate, you know, the people that stick with you and join you over the progression of, you know, a few months of doing it. They're like diehard interested in exactly what you have to offer. So there's really no better place to just talk and express your feelings and, and talk about what you're doing and also get some real lifetime feedback. And that feels so good when you're doing it live and people are like, yeah, I love it. Here's what I think. And you know, that's just, there's, there's nothing that compares to that. Yes. Oh well, yeah. I love that. I love the little comments on the side. I just, I did a few broadcasts just before this, just to practice. And there have been people who already like followed me and uh, wanted to know more about my art and I've directed them to my Facebook page and everything. So yeah, it, it's definitely a way to instantly connect with people. Yay. Yeah, I know. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm proud of you and I cannot wait. I will see you on social media as always and we'll connect again very, very soon. I can't wait. Oh yes. Thank you. That was Zita Barbara on AVA Live Radio for live streaming Tuesday. She is just incredibly wonderful and such a sweet person. So very, very talented. I hope you guys will be sure to catch her on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, and all of the 
important links so that you won't miss one single day of this wonderfully creative woman's life. This is Jacqueline Jacks for AVA Live Radio. Thanks for joining us. In my heart, you haunt me still, and I know forever will, and forever I will wait, if forever it will take until we meet again. been a long time since the last time that you wrote and even longer since the last time that we spoke but in my eyes you're still the same And I know forever will 